Hi everyone, this is Robert Schmidt with Deloitte Digital, broadcasting live, Mr. IoT at South by Southwest. Today we are in sunny Austin on 6th and Sabine, and we got some shade, which is really nice because it's actually nice and hot today after a couple days of rain. Today I am here at Living Art uh, with Mary. Hi Mary, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm doing great. Mary, tell us, what are you doing here? This is really pretty awesome, and I'm glad to have the artist of this living art here with me. So just tell us a little bit about you, and tell us what you're doing here. Yeah, so uh, this year I was working on a lot of the design assets for South by Southwest, and um, on the side I usually do spray paint art, and so they wanted me to paint this structure that they built. Um, let me kind of freehand it, do whatever I wanted on it, and I've been repainting it every day for the last three days. This is awesome. I have to ask you something. You work for Deloitte, right? Yes, I do. So I just have to say, you don't look like what many people think of us at Deloitte. You are a designer, you're an artist. You actually got even some paint on your face. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's a lot of crazy talented people in Deloitte Digital. Uh, many of them, they just don't tell us what they do on the side. And it just so happens they found out what I did and wanted to embrace it. Yeah. I actually know you guys just don't do this on the side. You actually also paint stuff in our studios. You're part of one of our studios. Tell us about our studios. Yeah, I was a part of the Deloitte Digital Fremont Seattle studio. Recently moved to Chicago. But when I was in Seattle, I was able to work on some murals and things there. Our illustrator, Mark Morris, he does most of the murals in the Seattle studio. Um, but I'll try to do artwork for certain events and um, in different offices around everywhere. <laughs> I love our studios. Thank yeah. you for doing this. Can we just walk a little bit through it? Can you show us something and actually paint while we walk over there? Uh, yeah, uh, I'm still working. Sorry, I'm still working on this one right here. Um, but we can, we, I can show you the rest of the sculpture. What is it? Uh, what's the sculpture? Yes. Um, I don't know. It's it was built by the production company. It was just um, kind of a random abstract shape. And you paint something different every day. Yeah, I try to change up a couple a couple of the flatter surfaces. Not all of it, but I'll just change a few of them. Okay, go at it. Show us. Come on. So Mary's going over now and looking and picking up some spray paint. As you can see, there is a bunch of cans. Um, and so we're going to just watch her doing some spray painting. I doodle a lot, and then I watch people who professionally doodle, and I just get slightly envious. So if I give you the mic now and ask you to just commentary what you do, what you think, just tell us what's going through your head right now. Um. Hold the mic. All right, now I'm just thinking about different shapes that I want to add to this. I kind of think of it how I would if I were designing something on a computer, um, just figuring out um, different layers. I stand here and it's really interesting. You know, not only is it a visual experience and it's live to watch, but there's also a really cool smell going on. I don't know. Some people like it, some people don't, but it has this typical smell of spray paint. But it's 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 really part of the experience standing here. And you know, it's the thing for me that's fun to watch is just like I don't know if you see this, but she's going and she's painting it, then she's coming back because she doesn't like it. There is no run uh, yet. She puts another layer on it, and now we're looking at colors. Uh, and she's stepping up and uh, putting some more yellow dots on there. I'm going to ask, actually, to have Mike Brinka join us here. Mike, do you want to come over? Mike is uh, a partner from Deloitte Digital also. Uh, Mike, how are you doing? I'm doing great today. Awesome. So what goes on for you when you watch Mary paint here? What do you think? Well, I've known Mary for a while, and I can tell you, uh, the world-famous Mary Tono is uh, an artist uh, on every medium. It's just amazing. What other mediums do you see her work on? Well, uh, in, data, in our day-to-day -day life, uh, unfortunately, we don't get to do street painting every day. So in our day-to-day -day life, she is an amazing digital artist in one of our studios. Awesome. So, Mike, we've known each other for a long, long time. I appreciate you being here with me. Too long. And too, long. too long. Too long. Yeah. 
Wow, I'm a little sad now. I thought that was a positive thing, but thank you. <laughs> so uh, when I came back to Deloitte a little bit over a year ago, I remember sitting in your office with you, and we started talking about drones and stuff like this, and you told me about your balloon adventures, and then you showed me your Christmas family picture. And the reason I bring this up is, as Mr. IoT, by the way, we're here at Mr. IoT uh, at South by Southwest, a daily show at 2 p.m. Central, noon Pacific. But when you showed me that, you had a balloon with sensors, and tell me about what you did. Well, yeah. So this is this is uh, not a professional thing, so I don't want to, you know, miss that expectations. But my son and I do a whole lot of, uh, let's just say, shooting things uh, into space, making things blow up. You know, anything we can do out in the desert to have a lot of fun. And this was uh, putting a balloon in space. Uh, I think we did it three times, and it ends up going about 100 miles away. With all kinds of sensors, actuators, cameras, um, just a whole lot of fun. It's very interesting. Yes, we do this in our spare time, and I think the thing I like about this is that what I do in my spare time actually has a big impact what I do at work. It kind of inspires me and it brings me ideas. And so when I think of that, um, I thought of you having the sensors that actually tell you where that thing flies and keeps it out of dangerous spaces. So I was pretty impressed by that. Thanks for sharing this. Yeah, yeah my, badge, my badge says troublemaker. But really, it should be troubled maker, more appropriately. Yeah, do you remember what uh, tag you gave me on my badge? <laughs> uh, was it Tiva? <laughs> <laughs> I had on mine whatever. whatever. So I'm just going to say, whatever. oh, whatever. <laughs> um, so, Mike... When we met here, you showed me something you saw at CES and that you were excited about. And I actually would have liked to really shoot this here in that with that kind of technology. Tell us about it. Well, yeah, the thing we were playing around with the other day is 360 video. Um, we are seeing, I've been shooting now 360 video for a few months in lots of different formats and forums. Um, really, the, they call it the consumer grade, which you know will stretch into all kinds of professional applications. But 360 video is is now become uh, just in the last uh, call it um, six months, 12 months, has not only become um, cheap enough and ubiquitous enough. Now everybody can carry it, but it's now being supported on YouTube and Facebook and everywhere. So now we can now shoot video in 360, so somebody can experience it. They can be essentially riding along in a sidecar as you shoot that video and be able to look around in the entire experience. Same thing with a photo. Photos um, traditionally have always been two-dimensional. Um, what, about a year and a half, two years ago, Apple made them, you know, live photos or living photos, added some, you know, made us rethink it. Well, now we have 360 photos, and 360 photos are going to allow you to experience an immersive experience around a situation where you can see everything going on, not just that little window into what was going on. It's it's going to be uh, amazing for the future of photography. It won't be every photo, but those photos that need that depth, that richness, that experience, it's going to be great. So when you showed this to me the other day, I actually, you showed me first people skiing in front of you, and then I got to watch you ski. You could ski here. I was really impressed by that. I wanted to ask you about the 360 in, um, in a business sense. I know when uh, you and I started talking about IoT, uh, you whipped out a spreadsheet with, I think it was like 200 different use cases for the Internet of Things. What do you think the use cases in the application for businesses are specifically around uh, virtual and augmented reality? Well, if we just take 360 first, right? So 360 video and 360 photos um, have all kinds of commercial applications. So the obvious ones would be things like real estate to go really experience a home, uh, a property, anything in a complete 360 immersive environment. But that could be the inside of a car. That could be you know, pretty much an event, a party, a situation, anything where you want to convey from a marketing perspective a richer, deeper uh, more immersive experience, uh, 360 is going to be great. And it's not just uh, experience, say, on a phone, but to be able to put on those goggles and essentially go somewhere. So if I want to go uh, look at a hotel in Paris, or maybe I'm thinking of doing a tour in Paris, right? why not put on the, the virtual reality headsets and go there and really experience it, right? Which is, you know, you think of where we've come in the digital age of being able to experience, you know, what is my seat going to feel like, you know, inside the airplane? What's my seat going to feel like in that stadium that I'm at uh, watching the basketball game? You know, 360 is going to be able to take us there before we actually go there. 
Um, that's going to be amazing. Uh, augmented reality is a whole other topic, right? That's, um, you know, around here and at CES and everywhere, we're seeing more and more virtual reality, but we're also seeing augmented reality. And augmented reality is going to be able to overlay, um, you know, essentially with our phones, with, with tablets, with, you know, different devices, we're going to be able to augment our reality around us. So maybe we're looking at a car, but you can hold it up and you can see surrounding it all the specs of that car. Maybe you're in a museum and you see a piece of art, but you're going to bring that art to life with all kinds of history, maybe even expand. Or maybe you see you're in Greece and you see ruins, but you could hold up, you know, and now see those ruins as they were, you know, thousands of years ago. So augmented reality is going to be able to, to, to bring to life other things um, that uh, you know, are, are going to truly make or enhance our physical experiences better, and it won't just be won't just be visual. It'll also be uh, it's also going to be audible as well. We're going to be able to augment you know what we hear uh, as much as what we see, um, and and that kind of technology is going to do amazing things for us going forward. I love that example of the ruins being built up. I have this vision of standing in front of ruins in Egypt or in uh, Greece and see how they slowly build up and then go and take the goggles back off and see them how they are today. I have this vision of not only just visually experiencing this, also, but also experiencing it through the sensors around me. Heather Engel had this interesting comment yesterday. She says the sensors today are a little bit like a room of three-year-olds all screaming mommy, and we get like just a lot of noise. And my vision of this is that there's going to be sensors eventually that give us smart information to actually really enhance the experience like you talk about it. So just bringing it back to IoT. Um, Mike, before I let you go, any comments, any questions for me? Anything else you want to add? Well, I, I just want to say this is uh, this is my fourth or f this is my fourth uh, fourth in a row South by Southwest, and I got to say this is the most digital place on the planet today. Uh, there is more going on here as it relates to you know digital interactive marketing. Uh, if you're over at the trade show, you'll see you know 50 percent of what's over at the trade show today is IoT, and four years ago. It wasn't like that, right? It is, you know, sensors in, in clothing, sensors in strollers, sensors, you know, everywhere. Uh, and, you know, the analytics and the machine learning and everything else that it takes to support them. And it's exciting to see the world move into this IoT world. Uh, whereas four years ago, you know, you went over there, it was all, you know, it was, it was web-based, you know, whatever in interactive yeah. marketing. So marketing, the world is all moving in this sensing, uh, learning IoT way. Mike, thanks so much. Yeah, thank Pleasure you. having you. Thanks for being here, okay? Yeah, awesome. So with that, I'm going to just step back in the shade because it's getting warm. Um, I want to introduce to you my partner in crime and uh, we together lead the IT practice for Deloitte, Andy Decker. Hey, Andy. How are you? I'm great. I'm great. Come closer so that uh, the, the difference between us comes a little more out. I love that. How? Yeah, thank you. <laughs> no, he's just a tall guy. So, Andy, um, Mike just talked about how there's so much IoT here. And I have this theory that today we call it the Internet of Things. Tomorrow, we're just going to go back to calling it the Internet. When do you think tomorrow will be when this all is just going to be the Internet again? I, I think sooner than we, you'd think. You know, I... I um I think 2016 is a big year where we're really seeing things move from the concept and idea and gee whiz stage into real practical applications with our clients. So I think within the next couple of years, I, I kind of agree with you that it's going to be more, you know, kind of not a separate thing in and of itself. It just will be part of the larger digital and Internet realm for sure. So Andy, there was an interesting panel today where they talked about IoT in the public space. Uh, Obama talked about it on Friday. His talk, he had his uh, thoughts around around security and privacy. Um, tell us, what do we do, Deloitte, uh, around the public space, around smart cities, around state, and so forth? Just tell us a little bit about your experience and what do we do around that. Yeah. We we have a you know great deal of of presence in public sector and it's especially at the state and federal level. We've uh, been starting to do some work in smart cities. We announced an alliance with AT&T at, at CES uh, just a couple months ago in, in January, excuse me. And so we are starting to see that turn into real uh, client work and opportunities. So um, we're involved with the Montgomery County in Maryland that is 
trying to create a vision and also get very tactical. And it seems like they're going to be doing something around smart transport and uh, the, you know, public transportation related, which is a big focal area in, in that smart cities. And, and it meshes well with some work we're doing in other industries around logistics and transportation and fleet tracking and in industry. Um, so, you know, that, that whole area of mobility and the future of mobility and what that means to cities. I mean, every city is really trying to figure out what autonomous vehicles means to them, you know, and how do they incorporate that kind of technology into the way that they serve the public and, and, and public transportation, which today is all very much, uh, you know, buses and trains and mass transportation, but thinking about how that maybe comes down to more of an individualized customized version because mass transit is good for many things getting to the office but if you're a person that needs to drop your kid off at school and then you're going to run an errand and then need to go to the office you're usually going to take your car because you know or you're going to take uber or some other way to get you from here to there because public transportation is kind of point to point so I, we've had some really interesting conversations and and the work that we've done on this future of mobility is really helping to uh, get people to think about the the, just the broad op opportunities and applications of this technology and what does it mean, you know? So, so uh, you know, just thinking on that whole public sector idea, you know, as you uh, think about where this is going and, and smart transportation and, and autonomous vehicles and all of the revenue that comes in today to municipalities and, and uh, counties around ticket ticket revenue from, you know, speeding tickets and parking tickets. In an autonomous vehicle world, there is none of that, right? So that, that scares the hell out of out of them right now because they don't know how, how are they going to pay for all this? Where's the money going to come from that funds a lot of the things that, that the cities do today? So it's, a, you know, it's, you start to think just, and, and this is all happening so fast that you know, it's it's just going to start to evolve, and and cities are trying to get ahead of it, thinking about well, where will the revenue come from if if uh, you know they they give less traffic tickets and less speeding tickets and all that. It's really interesting to me. I just was in Austria a couple of months ago, and I renewed my passport, and I was so impressed how electronic it was, and it showed me and how actually governments and cities are actually investing into having a modern interaction with consumers, and you were talking about a few of those interactions. Um, when you talk about mobility, I often think about the mobile phone, but actually what you're talking about is transportation, correct? There's this interesting stat, and I don't know if you remember this, and I just wonder if you can talk about it, how a regular-sized car costs about a dollar a mile and height comes down to 30 cents. Do you want to talk about that? Well, yeah, I, you know, I, I think that's, um, you know, as you pull some of these technologies, you, you start thinking about some of these technologies and, and the cost per vehicle mile, you know, and, and you bring in electric vehicles and, and autonomous vehicles where driving becomes much more efficient, the, uh, the cost per mile goes down. Absolutely. And, and the, other, the other thing, I was at a panel yesterday where they were talking about all this, and, and I hadn't really thought about this before, but they also said the total number in, in this autonomous vehicle world of the future, it's more likely that there will be more total miles driven because the transportation is going to be customized to you. You, you don't necessarily have to uh, drive your kids to soccer practice. They, it, it will, they could get in an autonomous vehicle, and you know once they're beyond a certain age and they can get out and you know, look after themselves. But so you just think about that, you know, you might have a, a ride to there and there, there, there's going to be a lot more total rides, um, but it's going to be a lot more efficient and, and the cost per ride will come way, way down. So IoT is here now, you say, and you're going to also say that it's soon going to be called the Internet again and we're going to stop calling it the Internet of Things and then you and I just going to lead the Internet practice or what? <laughs> Yeah, it's world domination. That's it. That's the ultimate plan, but don't tell anybody. <laughs> Oops, we just broadcasted that. <laughs> so, Andy, last question for you. Any personal comments about South by Southwest, and where are you going to go tonight? <laughs> I, I actually am, am looking forward to having uh, dinner with Thaddeus uh, Zaharis, who's our chief of staff, who's been ill, and he's a resident. So I want I want to see the insiders, uh, Austin, tonight. That's what I'm, I'm going to put some pressure on Thaddeus. But uh, I, it's been awesome. It's my first time I've been and I'm a music fan so I know most of that doesn't start until next week but uh, 
there's music everywhere you go in Austin. And so it's been really cool just to, to be here to sort of soak it up and, and be part of it. And, and man, Deloitte Digital did it right. Like it, it's been, you know, one of those, I well, one little story about how we, <laughs> we were out at dinner on Friday night at a barbecue place that's right around the corner on, on 6th and Red River from where Deloitte's uh, installation was at the, at the Palm Door. And we all, you know, kind of got done with dinner around 8 or so, and we sort of turned the corner, and we were going to go to the Deloitte installation, and there's this line of people backed up the whole way up the block. And we're like, what are all those people waiting for? And as, as we were walking down the block, we were realizing, holy cow, that's that's for us. <laughs> They're lined up to see us. And so it's, it was really cool to be such a integral part of things. And that team, you know, Rob Frazzini and the whole team did just such an amazing job. It's kind of fun to be part of Deloitte when you see this kind of stuff, isn't it true? Yeah, it is. It it's so is. funny, right? When I, a year, two years ago, I talked to one of the Deloitte guys when I wasn't working for, I took a break for 10 years, right? Uh, and I said, well, you want me to come back? Look at my shirt, right? And he said, no, we want exactly people like you. And now look at you and I here. It's really great to be with a creative crowd and at the same time be able to do everything from creative all the way to back end. So, Andy, thanks for joining. Absolutely. Thanks it's good seeing you. Thank you. This is Robert Schmidt from Deloitte Digital, uh, broadcasting live, Mr. IoT at South by Southwest, every day, 2 p.m. Central, Pacific Noon. And before I close out, I'd like to walk you one more time around the Living Art installation, and that'll be the end of our show today. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. I have to come back tomorrow and check out if there's again a spider web on there. This is amazing jazz. I just find it so much fun. Are we still alive? I think we're going to start cutting it. <laughs> Bye everyone.